You hear me okay? Yes? No? Or you can't and you're glad for it? So one of the things that I think uh, occurs to us after a little while of doing contemplative practice is that the words of the liturgy emerge out of silence. You could even say that they're expressions of silence. It's not so much that we have silence and then talking, but that all of it is held in this vivid, effervescent silence of God that finds expression sometimes in quiet and sometimes in words. And so see if, as we go between chant and the liturgy, simply being still, whether you can tune into that part that is always silent. to be the one holy and living God. Glory. Mighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord.
with you. Let's pray. Holy wisdom, in your loving kindness, you created and restored us when we were lost. Inspire us with your truth. We may love you with our whole minds and run to you with open hearts. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the rulers of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, 
or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Being taped on. Jacques Derrida, not usually uh, a name you hear in church, I don't think. Uh, used to say, il n'y a rien, or do text. There's nothing outside of the text and he's talking about deconstruction and literary analysis and all this kinds of stuff at least on the surface but I was thinking that one way to connect this idea that there is no outside of the text there's nothing that's not a text to the practice of Lexio Divina uh, is again to challenge any place where we think Lexio is not, right? Which for most of us is most of the time. Uh, but in fact, each moment of our life, each encounter, is a text, a sacred text, to be listened to, interpreted, prayed with, uh, and sat with in silence, right? So again, that notion that we live indeed in a world that is charged with the grandeur of God. If we learn how to take off our shoes and to recognize that the place where we are standing is holy ground, that the place we are standing is a holy text demanding to be read. Right? So Lexio really is a full program for, for living. I don't think you'll find it in 10 successful habits of, uh, 10 habits of successful people. Nonetheless, it will uh, utterly transform how you see, how you are, how you move through the li your life, uh, because it contains each of these beautiful little dispositions that over a lifetime we're, we're cultivating in our relationship with God. And the first aspect is that we remember ourselves as first and foremost a listening people, listening to a voice uh, that is not our own, looking upon a person, a life, the person of Jesus. In a way, there's nothing outside the text means that in some way, everything in our life speaks to us of him or the denial of him. So as a listening people, we cultivate this disposition of openness, lively, alert, receptivity. And we keep ourselves that inbreaking word of God that is always trying 
to speak to us with a word of comfort, a word of challenge, a word of conviction that we might live and live more fully. And so from that good and broad land of spacious listening, we listen for that word, phrase, or image that really chooses us. And with that precious gift, that precious stranger in our midst, we spend a little time simply being hospitable, being with that word, phrase, or image, turning it over gently in our hearts, not so much to analyze them, not so much to ask them where they where they've come from and how was your trip, but simply beholding, gazing upon this strange other. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs place of radical hospitality, of surrendered, attentive openness to God just as God is. The second movement of Lexio uh, asks us to engage our memory, reason, imagination, intellect, to reflect upon what this stranger, this messenger, this angelos, this angel uh, might have to show us, show us about our relationship to ourselves, show us about our relationship to God or to God's good creation, other people, a particular relationship in our life. And I think one of the interesting 
things to remember is that even when we're shown things about our self, say, that are difficult, that we don't much want to see or hear, so important to remember why we're seeing this. God only has one desire, which is for us to enjoy union and communion with God, to know ourselves, to be loved through and through. So everything along the way, even if it at first does not so appear, is for our healing, our transformation, our transfiguration, really, so that we might grow in love, so that we can then be that love for others, for the building up of the kingdom. So what is it that this word, phrase, or image is trying to suggest? How is the Spirit speaking in the church of your heart? Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Jesus asked him, Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. are a listening people we're a prayerfully reflective people willing to look in the mirror and embrace what we see and we're also a people who are in relationship with the one who loves us unconditionally. Sometimes in contemplative spirituality, um, you can get the idea that you're just supposed to be 
quiet all the time and uh, only relate to God beyond thought, word, and image. Um, but that's a curious kind of relationship for human beings with uh, hearts and lips and tongues and hearts and uh, tears. God wants us to use all of our faculties, our whole being, to be in relationship with God. So this is that place where we're invited into that reciprocal relational exchange where we can picture ourselves uh, in loving converse with God where we can picture ourselves you know, seated across the kitchen table probably before we've fully woken up and we really know what we're saying right? our words are out in front of our our brain in that sort of pre-coffee fog we have a sense of this person who loves us unconditionally who holds us in an unsettling, unsettling gaze of unconditional love. And we know the attention won't move from us for a second. So in that space of charged encounter, you know, what is it that gets said from the heart? Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus asked, answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. My kingdom were from this world. My followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. It was Augustine who um, reminded the church that the uh, purpose of human life is to enjoy God, right? to be enjoyed by God. And that's a good definition of what contemplation, contemplatio, resting in God, 
actually entails. It's not serving God. It's not talking to God. It's not reflecting upon God. It's simply wasting time gracefully with God, in God. And so we lay aside our prayers, silent or aloud. We lay aside our reflections. We allow ourselves to simply be in the presence. And once we get habituated to that habit of simply being in God, we notice the things that habitually pull us away from that simple childlike resting. And we let go, release those, and simply come back to simply be. And what gets patterned in, the, in us is a deep, deep recognition that enjoying God is a lot more enjoyable than enjoying our thoughts about the future and dwelling on the past. And the, the contrast becomes sometimes painfully obvious. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So I'm curious to uh, 
hear what you heard and how you were reflecting on it or playing with it or enjoying it. What have you got? It's all right, Ma. I'm only dying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only bleeding. What else? Sorry. Those of you who were in Bible study on Wednesday night remember that the line that's not in the lectionary for some strange reason for this day is the famous line from Pilate, like, what is truth? And it's the same kind of thing. Like, you know, you want to grab Pilate and say, no, not what is truth, but who is truth? <laughs> he thinks truth is, and we do too, right? Uh, about having the right set of ideas between our ears. I mean, what Jesus is proposing, and especially in John's gospel, is that truth is something that you participate in, that you belong to. It's a personal, relational thing. Out of that will come true expressions, true beliefs, thoughts, uh, but the belonging comes first. And we often have it the other way around. We think that if we just get the, our ideas right, that then we're going to belong to the truth. I was struck by, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? It's a strange question. But I think what, at least one way I was praying with it was that I think Jesus is pointing out how in situations like these where somebody's about to be executed, murdered, so few of the people in the crowd, in the mob, actually ask this on their own. They just take what everybody else says and huddle up against this sacrificial victim. They're not asking this on their own. It's just, you know, yeah, what he said. Let's do it. Crucify him. Crucify him. 
and that that kind of huddling up against sacrificial victim is exactly what blinds us to the fact of Jesus coming into the world. Um, so, you know, like it's a great question. Am I thinking that on my own? Or is this just, just what my dad said after you know, whatever? A couple glasses of wine at dinner all through my teenage years, yeah? That's, about, that's the question I ask my college students. You know, who's talking right now? You know, is that grandpa or is that you?
Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. And before time you made ready the creation, your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. So this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. <laughs> praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
the supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine again. He gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now, gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mark, our patron and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For the people of God.
us pray. <clears throat> Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth the people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life out for the whole world. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.